Welcome back everybody to multiplying polynomials. We're doing uh, section 4.4 right now. When we left off, we were talking about multiplying binomials. So we talked about FOIL as most of you, if you, most of you call it. I prefer just distributing. And we ended up on an example where we had P plus seven and P minus seven. And we ended up getting P squared minus 49. This leads us into the next topic. So this is special cases of multiplying binomials. And the first one we have is sum and difference of two terms. This one is the difference of squares, okay? Now, anytime you get this case where you have this term is identical, the first term is identical, and the last term in each parenthesis are opposites. We have a negative y and a positive y. What happens is we're gonna, what I like to do, I'll show you. I like just distributing like this, and then I go underneath like this. And that's how I distribute. I distribute the x to both terms in the second parenthesis and the negative y to both terms in the second parenthesis. So we'll go ahead and start with the x. We get x squared and then plus xy. Then let's go to the blue. And we get uh, negative xy. I'm putting the x first even though the y, I'm doing negative y times x. I'm listing the x first because it's alphabetical. And then I get minus uh, y squared. Now what happens here? Well, we can combine xy and negative xy. The middle ones are always the ones you can combine like terms and they cancel out. So we end up with, let me change the color here for emphasis, x squared minus y squared. And that is our final answer. This is always the case when you have this situation of the first terms matching and the second terms being opposites of each other. You have the x squared, the first term squared, minus the second term squared, and that's it. That's why it's called difference of squares. So if we have the case here, uh, r plus 5 and r minus 5. If you're ever like, huh, I don't recognize that that's difference of squares, or I don't see the pattern, or I'm confused, you can always just do this type of distribution. You can always do FOIL. It will work, okay? This is mostly just a time saver. And it also helps with factoring in, in later times, but it's a time saver. It's, it, you don't have to do as much math, and it, it's a way to get through tests a little bit quicker and more effectively, okay? But you can do FOIL. That's, it's on the table, okay? So let's see here. We have the, the R is matching in both, and then we have opposites for the last term, okay? Knowing this rule, I know I can apply it with this situation, okay? X squared minus Y squared. Well, this is our X and this is our Y. Let me change that to Y. If we're plugging into the formula, okay? So if we go X squared minus Y squared, X squared minus Y squared, we know that our X is equal to R and our y is equal to 5. So we can just kind of plug in. This is a way to consider it. r squared, and then minus, and then we have 5 squared. So we have r squared minus 25. Let me change that to red. r squared minus 25, and that's our answer. Now again, if you go ahead like this and FOIL or distribute, I like distribute personally, we get R squared minus 5R plus 5R minus 25. The middle terms are gonna cancel, you get the same thing. So if you don't like doing it the first way I said, that's fine, go ahead and FOIL. I'm not gonna tell you that you have to do it a certain way, okay? Look here, let's do a few more examples just so you can see how it works. We have these first terms are matching, okay? That's a good sign. And then the second terms are opposites. We have a positive five and a negative five. What we can do here is we can just simply square the first term to r squared. Now we have to square both things, the two and the r. And then we're gonna subtract. I'm gonna put a red just so you notice that we're subtracting. And then we have the second term, five squared, okay? This becomes, it's similar to the other one, this becomes four, I square the uh, two, and I square the r, r squared, minus 25, and that's your answer. Again, you can distribute, and you're gonna get the same thing. Now, what do we have in this situation? Well, we have this being multiplied, but then we should notice that we have difference of squares here, difference of squares, 
Okay, so what we can do is we can apply difference of squares here. There's my first term. There's my second term. The second terms are opposite, so I'm going to square the first term minus the square of the second term. X squared minus 9. But I need to keep this in parentheses because I still have to multiply this by 2x cubed. Okay, so now I'm going to distribute the 2x cubed because uh, that's what's left to do. I'm going to choose, let's finish this up in green. So I have 2 times the coefficient of x squared, which is just 1. And then I have x cubed times x squared. I'm going to add these exponents, x to the fifth, minus, now I need to multiply these numbers, 18. And then I have just an x cubed at the end, and there's my answer. Okay, so two steps here. We have uh, multiplying uh, monomial by a binomial, and then we also have difference of squares. Again, you could FOIL here if you're uncomfortable with the other um, way of doing it. Okay, now we have square of a binomial. Now, this one... <laughs> in my opinion, is not as useful, but I mean, there's still a pattern to it, so we need to discuss it. First off, if we have x plus y squared, that's the same thing as x plus y times x plus y. So if we go ahead and we uh, distribute or FOIL, however you want to call it, and we go like this, what we're going to get is we're going to get x squared plus xy plus xy plus y squared. We're going to combine like terms. We get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And there we go. There's our answer. What do you notice? Well, we square the first term. Okay, that's one thing we notice. We square the last term. And then we double the product of the first and last term. So there's the first term. There's the last term. And then we double it. Okay, that's, that's the formula. Square the first term double the product of the first and last term and then square the last term and add them all together. Okay, so if we're looking at this one, okay, we have the first term, we have the last term, okay? So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, I can say this is equal to the first term squared, the last term squared, seven squared, and then we have the product of the first and uh, last term. So we have seven times M. That's the product of the first and last term. But then we have to double it. Okay, and it's all positive. Okay, because this is positive. The, the, there's a positive sign and they're all positive. So we're just gonna keep all the signs positive. Sorry about my M, it's a little, it's a little patchy. Here we go, I'm gonna fix it up. Okay, so now I'm just gonna simplify from here. Let's go dark blue equals m squared plus two times seven m is 14 m plus 49, okay? Now, as you get better and better at this, you can be like, okay, this squared, m squared, this squared, 49, and then I do seven times m and I double it, 14. And you, get, you can get quick at it, okay? So this becomes like a recognition thing and it becomes a problem that you can do quickly. Will you be wrong if you write this out? Okay, I know this is m plus seven times m plus seven, and I'm gonna multiply, distribute. Would you be wrong doing that? No, you wouldn't, okay? Would it take a little bit more time? Yes, but it's not wrong, okay? These are just kind of shortcuts. Now, here's another one. And uh, let me just use, I'm gonna use red, or no, magenta this time. And I'm gonna say, okay, first term squared, p squared. Last term squared, now the last term I would consider negative four. So that's my last term. But if you square the last term, negative four squared, it's just gonna be positive 16, okay? Anytime it's negative, the last term's always gonna be positive. So it's gonna be positive 16. I'm gonna put that over there. Now, it's the middle term that you double. Negative four times P gives us negative four P, and don't forget we have to double that, okay? So I kind of wrote this in a weird way, plus, plus, okay? What ends up happening anytime you have a minus is you're gonna end up with a minus in your final answer. So you're gonna end up P squared minus eight P because you double negative four and you get negative eight times P and then plus 16. So there you go. You double the, you double the last term, you square the last term, but when you double a negative, you're gonna still end up with a negative. We can even do it with uh, multiple terms out in front. So we have 2p squared gives us 4p squared. We have 3f squared gives us 9f squared. And this is the tricky part. We're gonna have to multiply uh, three 
f times 2p and then double it. So you can also, what you could do, because you have to do 3f times 2p and then double it, you could consider doubling 2p and then multiplying it by 3f or doubling 3f and then multiplying. It's all commutative, so you can go in any order you want. But anyway, you do 3 times 2 and you're going to multiply it by 2 again, and it only applies to the coefficients when you double it, okay? So we do 3 times 2 times 2 is going to give us positive 12, and then we have fp. Okay, so then that is our final answer. Okay. All right, multiplying functions. This is kind of like the last thing. If you remember composite functions, we had like f of g, and we also talked about if you subtract functions or add functions. Okay, composite functions is its own thing, so don't worry about that right now. But we can multiply functions together also. So this is when you have f g, that means, let me get rid of this for distraction purposes. This literally means f of x times g of x. That's all there is to it. So don't get confused. Oh, what's this f g of x? Okay, it just means f, time, f of x times g of x. So if we have two functions here, we're asked to multiply them together. As it suggests here, this is the same thing as f of x times g of x. So then we just go 3x plus 4, put parentheses around it, times 2x squared plus x. Now I'm going to foil this, or what I like to do, distribute. So I'm going to go like this, dark blue. I'm almost finished. This is the last problem, in case you're keeping track of time. <laughs> so I multiply the 3x times the 2x squared. I get 6x cubed, right? This is a little bit more challenging one. Then we have 3x squared. There's no coefficient of this last term, so I just multiply it. Keep the 3 there, multiply the x's. Now let's move on to purple. All of it's positive. This is going to make it easier for us. 4 times 2x squared gives us 8x squared. And then we have plus 4x. You're always going to have like terms, and that's the case here. So we have like terms here and here. Let me simplify in red. 6x cubed. There's no other 6x cubed. Then we have plus 11x squared. Uh, now we're in addition phase, so we just add the numbers out in front. Keep the x squared there. And then plus 4x, and there's our final answer. Now, what happens if we have f g of negative 1? We have two options here. We could figure out what f g of x equals f of x times g of x, and then we just plug in this negative 1 into this function anywhere we see x. But probably the easier way to consider this is to plug in negative 1 into both functions, okay, and then multiply the functions when you're done. I mean, I'm going to change the color actually. Let's go orange, and I'm going to erase this, sorry. Just showing you that we're going to plug it into both functions, okay? So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to start with orange. We have 3 times negative 1 plus 4, all in parentheses, and we're going to multiply this by uh, this dark red. Multiply this by parentheses, 2 times negative 1 squared, uh, plus a negative 1, okay? A little messy here, but you see I'm just plugging in negative 1 into both functions anywhere I see x. And now I'm going to simplify. In this parenthesis, we have 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 4. In this parenthesis, I have negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2 is 2, plus a negative 1, the same thing as minus 1. So I have negative 3 plus 4 gives me negative 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1, that's going to be equal to negative 1. So that is going to be my answer to that f of, sorry, not f of g. So fg of negative 1 equals negative 1. Okay, that's not always going to be the case, but in this, in this time it was. Okay, hope you guys like this video. Part 2 was helpful. We got some little shortcuts for you. Join us next time when we talk about dividing polynomials. That's a whole animal in its, uh, in its own right. But thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.